Hello, Elvena players. Hello. This is Rike and Timon from the Elvena team, and today we are going to talk about the new guest race we just released yesterday. It's the sorceress and dragons, right? <laughs> so, what is the guest race about? A new guest race comes to town, and this time it's not like in the past that you somehow build up a portal and then they are revived from the dead or whatever. No, this guest race was always alive in Elvena, but they were hidden and they uh, they were now um, I could say attracted yeah, by they... by the by the mana you discovered exactly. uh, in the last chapter with the wood elves. No. Yeah, and so they enter your town and said, well, we could actually build up a university right mm -hmm. here. And um, let's see if we can exchange knowledge and grow together. Yeah. And it's a really nice concept where you have three different kinds of magic, tri uh, could you say tribals maybe even, like necromancers and yeah. the archaeologists and the alchemists. <laughs> this is so hard to, <laughs> to pronounce. Yeah. <laughs> and also it's a great race to make this. <laughs> yeah. yeah, if you have watched the last uh, Inu episode. No. Yep. Things yep. got a bit personal then. Personal. <laughs> but, yeah. but honestly, I really, really love uh, all three of the sorcerers. And um, also the different style they bring in the quest when you read the text, it, it gives more flavor than, than before. I, I really, yeah. really like the quest line this time and okay. also the task. Um, and it's cool that you can start right away. No? This time the, the, the settlement buildings, as we call them, you can unlock them at the very beginning of the chapter mm -hmm. and you can start immediately and feel the new guest race, not yeah. just after 10 technologies, but already after two or three. Yeah. This is cool. You dive deep into it right from the start. And yeah. I'm looking forward to your reactions. How do you feel about that? And maybe that's also one of your questions. Let's see if you already have questions. No, I think no. it's more of a comment. Ah, first one. Oh, that's very nice, Tiara. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, the, I'm pretty sure the support will take care of your ticket. Um, I think we have. We can some, start some with some exactly. questions we we received from the forums. Oh, um, maybe this one is uh, why is there no upgrade for the barracks mercenary camp? <laughs> yeah, so more a general question actually. Nah? If you, um, as you might have noticed in the Wood Elves, we only have upgrades for the barracks and the mercenary camp. Um, the thing is, we have now a lot of battle-related technologies in the tech tree, and we try to find ways how we could reduce it a little bit because we know not everyone is fighting in this game. Um, so we have these three different uh, unit production buildings with the barracks, the mercenary camp and the training grounds. And then we also have the armory. So this would make four technologies every chapter for upgrades. And we said maybe we do just two every chapter but give four levels instead of two levels. And then we have the same amount of content, the same amount of buildings, but it's a bit more every race has a focus on this or on that. And we can have more technologies with other stuff, which is not battle related. So that's basically the reason for it. Yeah. And now you also see why you get four upgrades with these technologies, while usually you only receive two upgrades when you exactly. unlock residences or workshops. Yeah. Maybe another one. Let me see. Um... Um, Maybe just the first question? Yeah, why are the buildings so big in size while there are just two city grid expansions available via research? <laughs> the, the nasty game designer. Every <laughs> guest race he reduces the amount of map expansions. So basically you have two sources for new expansion. No? The, the one source, the one big source is the tech tree where you can unlock new expansions and the other source is your progress on the world map which also allows you to get more city map expansions. And as you correctly noticed, um, some of you, <laughs> the amount of um, expansions in the tech tree goes down uh, over time. So in this chapter, we only have two of them now. Um, actually, the number of expansions in the tech tree is not really related to the 
buildings in a settlement. We already uh, we, we always look at the complete city size, and then we try to find um, we we. We part. We uh, um, We divide, we divide it into it. sections. Like there's one part reserved for the settlement size, and one part reserved for residences and for workshops and so on. And we take care that there's enough space for all the parts, so you can have a working economy and everything works fine. But in the but in the past, we saw that that many players have some problems to estimate how big the settlement should be. And we have players that built way too small settlements. And with way too small, we mean they did not produce enough, a lot of resources and they got stuck in the tech tree. And for them, it, the, the whole uh, chapter feel, felt quite difficult. No? And then we have the other players that built way too big settlements because they think they need it. And we don't give them hints. No? And for them, the, the technologies seem to be very easy to unlock and they spe speeded through the tech tree and were, uh, completed it um, too fast and um, they were waiting for content all the time. Um, so we tried now an approach where we say, okay, we give you a more precise uh, hint <laughs> okay, how, 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 big, how big the settlement has to be. Yeah. So everyone has around the same hurdles and we can, we can make the, the whole player journey a bit more straightforward and equal for everyone. This means that for those of you who built maybe a very small settlement in the past now suddenly have to have a bigger settlement. And this can be a bit challenging, but it's safe to say if you encounter this problem, it might be helpful to look at your world map progress if you maybe are a bit behind and could just barely open the chests. So maybe you can get some more map expansions from the world map. And on the other side, look at your city and maybe you have some buildings there that are idling for most of the time. Maybe you have too many uh, manufactories and can get rid of some of them or too many residences, too much population. And then you can save up some space and we are sure you will have enough space for the university. Yeah. But we also are here to answer your questions. For example, Ladybird asked if there will be a new unit, for example, a dragon or something. Yeah, so a battle-related question. Yeah. Um, lots of stuff happened for the battle in the past, no? but we calmed down a bit on that and we will certainly focus even more on other topics from now on. Um, as you know, we have three unit production buildings, the barracks and the mercenary camp and the training grounds, and each of them can hold up to five units. And if you look at uh, the current state, uh, there's only one space left. No? Barracks is already complete and the uh, um, training grounds is already complete and now only one spot is missing in the mercenary camp and we fill the spot up soon. <laughs> yeah, I mean in this, in this new chapter with the sorcerers we filled the fourth uh, spot now with the Valorian guard and I'm, I hope you enjoy this new unit. It's a bit like the Paladin and especially for elven players it's a new kind of gameplay experience to use it in battle but there's still one more unit coming. But I have nothing to announce <laughs> today uh, what kind of unit that might be. But you can guess it will be, I mean, I can't say that much, it will be a heavy ranged unit, of course. Yeah. This is the spot that's empty. Hmm? <laughs> Ciara has another question. No. Uh, it's um, any new special events on the horizon? Yes, always. <laughs> <laughs> no, really. Um, we, we, we've done some special events uh, last year and every one of them was uh, hit with very positive feedback from the community. So we think you love them and if we are wrong please tell us but <laughs> our impression so far is that uh, maybe we shouldn't overdo it but we should have uh, so those events frequently. Yeah. And I mean <clears throat> the next bigger event is Around the corner. Yeah, around the corner, probably. But we will not announce it today. No, 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 no. no, no. We're not I mean, the last <laughs> smaller event was Valentine's, and before we had the, the, the winter, winter event. And I think the next event will be a bit more like the winter event again, but yeah. I won't say more. Yeah, no. and probably you can guess which season it could be a topic on. It's so easy. <laughs> but we still uh, keep it, and yeah. the album are. Realm, so it's no cliche stuff. But it's coming soon. Yeah. Um, uh, oh, um, Dieter de Mezenal, Mezenal 
I'm so sorry I could pronounce it. Um, can we get a hint about the new use of blueprints? Yeah, yeah. So um, blueprints for everyone who doesn't know what it is, um, you can win blueprints in the tournaments. You know that when you are in a fellowship, you can participate in the tournaments every week uh, on the world map and the fellowship collects points, tournament points, and uh, the more points you collect, the more chests you can unlock. There are 10 chests you can actually unlock every week. Um, and if you manage to collect so many points that you can unlock all chests, the last chest contains a blueprint. So what it is useful for? For now, it was only in a useful for the magic residences and uh, the magic workshops. So we also got some feedback that for some players, this is not a very attractive reward. No? If you don't have a magic residence or a magic uh, workshop, you couldn't use the blueprint. So we are about to change that. It will take some more time, but mm -hmm. be sure we will add a new functionality to the blueprints that uh, it is useful for every one of yes. you. And you will want these blueprints. Yeah. <laughs> I'm very confident. Yeah. It will be awesome. Um, Marine Marianne has a concern. Um, she um, oh, maybe maybe I should say what it does for magic residences and workshops well, because I didn't, I didn't <laughs> specify. So what you are doing is if you use the blueprint, you can upgrade those buildings. No, you cannot just upgrade a magic residence or workshop um, to the next chapter and uh, and improve balancing values like improved coins and population uh, production. Um, but with the blueprints, you can. So, and there was no other way to upgrade these magic buildings. And the blueprint will be used for other upgrades in the future as well. But which ones, uh, I can't tell you today. <laughs> <laughs> so back to uh, Marie, uh, Marie and Marianne concerns. Um, mm -hmm. She says, the last two eras came a bit too quick and we couldn't really catch up with any, uh, it anymore. Just saying. So, how about the cycle? And yeah, actually in 2016 we started adding um, new guest races quite fast. In as of last year our plan was to add four guest races and we did that with the fairies and the uh, orcs and then the wood elves and then we already saw yeah. we added them a bit fast. So we slowed it down a bit and waited a bit longer for the sorcerer's release and we will further look uh, how, how it develops, how fast players uh, can uh, complete new chapters. And it's certainly not our intention to, to yeah. rush you through the chapters. Absolutely, so if we yeah. see you, you need a bit more time to complete it, um, then we, we can also slow, slow down the release of those chapters. I mean, of course, we also see from the numbers that the player speed is very different. No? Some players need two to three months for a chapter, which is really fast. And there are other players that usually need more like four or five months. And it will be tough to get this in sync. Mm -hmm. um, but we are also working on that, actually. I yeah. mean, we, we want to, uh, how do you say, to, to, to lower the differences between the fastest and the slowest mm -hmm. players in the long run. But it's, as you can imagine, it's a difficult task. Everyone yeah. has its own play style, after yeah, all. Yeah, absolutely. Um, uh, before I um, ask the next question, yeah. guys, ask more questions. We want to answer them and yeah. uh, feel free to uh, ask everything you want and um, we will be happy to answer. Um, there are a lot of uh, questions concerning the trader. Um, let's pick one of them. Um, oh, it's, uh, let's pick Sharon Hudson Carr. Um, mm -hmm. Are uh, we ever going to put the trader back to what it was? So we are actually only talking about the last tap of the trader, right? Because we did not touch any functionality of the I'm trader, sure but the that. wholesaler. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think um, we saw that uh, many people are using the wholesaler excessively. And um, like we had players that clicked on the wholesaler 100 times a day mm -hmm. and we saw from that behavior that something is wrong. <laughs> no? uh, because the wholesaler is actually not designed to be part of your daily routine. You should actually not need it too much. So what we want to 
get uh, or we, we want to get to a point where you uh, have to use the wholesaler less and less. I mean, of course, it is cooler if you just can uh, accept trades from other players. But we know there are some problems. Uh, for once, we know that not too many players uh, add offers to the trader. Yeah. So if you are one of those people who are looking to accept offers and you can't find what you're looking for, many of you switch to the wholesaler and just bought the stuff for your coins and supplies, which is fine and which is why we implemented the wholesaler. But what we actually want is that more people participate in trading goods with each other. And this is also less expensive for you. If you focus on producing your boosted goods and you trade them for the goods you do not produce, it's way cheaper than using this expensive wholesaler. Yeah. So we are further looking on, on the trader how we can um, how we can motivate more of you to <laughs> to insert offers <laughs> so more people can uh, uh, make trades. But that is actually our goal. Our goal is is not to make the wholesaler a nice gameplay experience. Our goal is to make the trader a nice gameplay experience yeah, yeah. where everyone participates and adds offers to it. And we know it's a bit of a work to yeah. add 20 offers a day or something. Yeah. So we, we will work on that a bit and just hope that the wholesaler will be less interesting for you in the future. Yeah, actually, um, Dieter de, uh, de Mezzanette um, mentioned that he is actually using the trader way more than before. Thanks of this. That's uh, yeah, I mean, this is a bit like now that the wholesaler is it's not so cool anymore. I, I was pushed to use the trader more. Mm. It's not the coolest uh, gameplay I, I know. And um, we are also a bit sorry for that. Maybe, um, we, I mean, maybe we focused on the wholesaler first and now we will focus on the trader. And yeah. it, it might have been also a good idea to focus on the trader first and then on the wholesaler. In, in retrospective, sometimes we think about the stuff a bit differently, right? Um, and um, I mean, I think we can be open about this. And we, we also had two versions of the new wholesaler. And the first one we put on our test market was uh, also uh, not welcomed by the player. So we, we got back and reworked it again and improved it. And we are now quite confident that the wholesaler is fine now as it is. Um, but on the other side, we still have work to do. And we have to improve the trader yeah. as a whole, certainly. Um, I see a lot of uh, questions and comments regarding the trader, but maybe you're also interested in some uh, sorcerer topics, but elsewise we can just talk again about the wholesaler. I s it seems that this topic is very important for you <laughs> and we want to hear you. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, no, sorcerers is, is very cool stuff, yeah. but many players are not in the Wood Elf or yeah. Sorcerer's chapter yet. And uh, but the wholesaler everyone has access to, no? and every player is uh, somehow experiencing the no new wholesaler right now, and that's natural that everyone wants to know about it. Yeah, yeah. No. Maybe. So, so if you have a, a specific question that is not yet tackled, <laughs> then <laughs> feel free to ask. Um. Um. I, for instance, here Gary yeah. asks. Wow, it's moving so fast. <laughs> but it was yeah. like about uh, removing the trader fee uh, or reducing the trader fee. So actually, that's an ancient wonder for that. Uh, <laughs> so if you want to pay less for the trader fee, um, then you can build the Blooming Trader Guild, which is available after completing the ferry chapter. Maybe that's not around the corner for you. But in general, the trader fee is also something you should really consider. The trader fee will always only pop up when you accept an offer. If you're one of the smart guys who, uh, um, who creates offers, you will never have to pay the, uh, the trader fee. Have you thought about that? I mean, every, I, we see that not enough players make offers and we are like, why don't, you, why don't you create more offers? You can save the trader fee. Only those who do not create offers have to pay trader fee. So if you don't like the trader fee, the easiest way to get around it is make an offer. Oh. <laughs> maybe, maybe this is a bit of, a, of an evil answer, but <laughs> it's, it's true. 
we want to push you a bit to make offers and the tr trader fee is one thing and the other thing is when if you don't like trader fee join a guild if you have uh, a fellowship <laughs> sorry <laughs> this is a bad mistake yeah fellowship so if you join a fellowship and just trade with your fellows you also mm -hmm. don't have fee right so yeah um david lee harvey is interested if um how about giving us a 12 a 12 hour option on our supplies we have uh, a three hour a nine hour and a 24 hour why not a 12 hour option this is just i mean maybe it's a bit a short answer but this is uh, the, the the times were made from experience now we have uh, we have looked at other games when we when we established those times and also at typical uh, daily routines of, of people because we designed the game around the idea that you play it a few times a day and we, we said okay three hours is cool if an engaged player plays the game every three hours that's already a lot right and then we have the nine hour option because you have to sleep at some point <laughs> no? uh, on the other side if you have a 12 hour option that's actually not very fitting for most people no? for instance um, you this would mean you you would uh, only be able to produce twice a day but at very different times like if you say for instance i produce at eight o'clock in the morning that is most likely shortly after you uh, stood up but uh, eight um, eight o'clock in the afternoon or in the evening that is way before you go to bed so it's uh, but the nine hour production covers this way better we say you can play Elvena right before you go to sleep and right after you wake up and the nine hour production fits way better than the 12 hour production. And you have a bit of an incentive to play maybe three times a day. While when you have a 12 hour production, you would maybe only play twice a day. Um, <laughs> Rita um, Woodland has um, an interesting um, request that um, can you please give us another option for picking up rune shards for specific wonders yes <laughs> <laughs> you're waiting for something like this right <laughs> yeah so if you don't know tomorrow we will have a new inno games episode so in like around 12 hours maybe. without me <laughs> yeah because when we did the episode she was sick yes but more on that tomorrow <laughs> but what, what I can tell you is we did the first step on giving you a better chance to receive the rune shards you want because we know the further you pro progress through the game the more ancient wonders are unlocked and it's tougher to get the rune shard you want and the first step towards an easier way to get the rune shards you want will be announced tomorrow in the new games episode <laughs> And I just uh, would refer to that. Go and see. <laughs> wow, you're so fast with your comments. It's cool. That means the we have some yeah. people watching it, That's right? That's amazing. Yeah. So let's pick something. Uh, okay. Um. Uh, Sarah Medina um, is asking um, Timon and Rike. Um, are there any plans to um, motion to re revamp the chat feature, like adding a world chat similar to Forge of, Forge of Empires, so we can easily speak to players in the worlds? Um, actually, currently we do not think too much about the no. chat functionality. I mean, we, we thought a lot about when we implemented it, and back then we said most important is that you chat with people in the, in the fellowship because you, your gameplay is kind of linked to them with the trading and with the tournaments and um, so for us it was most important to have uh, have chat in the fellowships and on the other side if you have a worldwide chat you need some moderation usually because yeah. a lot of there are always some people who write bullshit yes. into chats you know it and it's uh, it's it's a lot of effort to keep this clean and helpful for you we know it also has Obviously, it has positive sides to yeah. the world chat, but it has a lot more problems than the chat in, in, in a fellowship. And that's why, for now, we kept it in the fellowships. Yeah. Um, Bluecrust wants to know, uh, when will solo players get to play tournaments again? It's not planned. No. You should really join a uh, yeah. fellowship. <laughs> I said it again. Yeah. Next time, I owe you money. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah. 
we really want you to be part of a fellowship. It makes the game yeah. much more engaging. It's more fun to play. It gives it a social component. component. You know, it, there are humans playing this. This is a wonderful thing that you do not have in, in many other games that you are playing one-on-one -on -one with, with, uh, with people in a, in a semi-multiplayer environment where you can do your own stuff and no one t is t tells you what to do. At the same time, you are not alone. And you can only experience this very special feeling that free-to-play games offer if you are part of this fellowship. So I can only um, what do you say, uh, recommend you to, yeah. to join a guild. Absolutely. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so you pay me money. Oh. <laughs> actually, I was one of those people who said we should call it fellowships. Yeah. <laughs> 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 All the time. So um, uh, Chuck Haney uh, says, uh, how about limited fellowship only trades? Um, sometimes I want to help a member out, but the trade gets bought by someone outside the mm. fellowship. You could put a time limit on that. So you mean if you earned, uh, if you add an offer it for some time it does not appear on the open market, so yes. you have time to. That's interesting. Uh, actually, I, I encountered this this problem as well. And <coughs> it's actually super fast solvable. Just let the guild member set up the offer instead of you do this because then you can take it and no one will. Well, if even if someone. Um, someone takes it, the guild member is helped. So this would be a very easy fix. But to put the finger into the open wound, this whole problem only exists because not enough people are mm -hmm. making offers. Yep. So if more people would create offers, you wouldn't have demand for that. Mm -hmm. So my primary goal is to make this gameplay of the trader more appealing so more people will add offers. And when more people add offers, you don't have to make this actually more complicated process to talk with someone and say, hey, now I will insert this uh, offer, now go to the trader and accept it before it's gone. Mm -hmm. this, is, this is a workaround because we do not have enough offers. And currently that's actually how you have to deal with it. And it's, that's sad, that's a problem, I, uh, I acknowledge. So. Um, we, we really want to get more people trading. Um, this one I will take, and yeah. you can search for new questions, because okay. um, <laughs> uh, Susan Rogers uh, says, can we have more avatars that are people of colors? And actually, I totally agree with you. We need more there. And well, the person doing the avatars is mostly me, so I try to fit in some new ones when I have the time. And of course, I try to fit in some in the new races, so we have more vari variety. But I know there are a lot of players that are not that far approached. So if I get the time, I will totally do some, so we have more variety. And actually, you can never have enough avatars. So it's on my plate, but it might take some time, just because I have to fit it within my schedule. But I hear you. Yeah. Yeah, it's true. I mean, this is a very, I mean, in, in certain ways, it's a very colorful game. It's a fantasy setting yeah, and absolutely. all kinds of people and races and, and stuff come together and yeah. do their part to create a, to create this unique culture and yeah. we should support it more. Yeah, right? absolutely. With more varied uh, avatars, definitely. Yeah. So, next question. Finally, so... Ah, it's moving so fast. Yes, yeah, really I hard. I saw someone <laughs> else ask about storage. Will you ever provide storage? Uh. <laughs> <laughs> I tried to avoid it, but you took it. <laughs> uh, let's just uh, try to avoid the answer. We are thinking about storage options, but always keep in mind that handling your city and the space you are given is part of the challenge, and we will never make it easy to just, I don't know, put everything in the storage and start with a plain field. Don't wait for that. Don't wait for that. It will always be part of the challenge to think about which building to move where and make room, which maybe even to sell. And uh, we will not uh, get rid of that challenge. And we know that a lot of people also enjoy this puzzling. Oh. And um, we did some, uh, we made made it somewhat easier, right, with the with the guest race. When every time you tear down a settlement, you have a lot of space that you can use to re reshuffle everything in your town, and you should just use this time frame. Um, but beyond that, we are also thinking about how we can give you a bit more flexibility 
But there's nothing we can announce yet. <laughs> we, I mean, we could, but we shouldn't. <laughs> yeah. Wait. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, no, we can't answer what the next event will be, but there will be one. Oh, we teased it a lot, I think. Now. That's right, but maybe oh. he, he ca didn't come um, ah, maybe by then. Yeah, so, yeah. 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 So, m more questions? Uh, a lot of questions. We have floated with them. Uh, I don't understand this one because... Uh, but we still have uh, oh, questions yeah, yeah. Just here, right? Oh, yeah, take those and I take a good question of those many good questions. Um, so, why are the required mana costs so high in this chapter's researchers? So, this is one of the questions that was asked in the forums. Um, and the thing is, of course, with every chapter, the demand for mana will increase. And you could argue, hmm, but if you compare to wood elves, the jump is quite high. Now, here's the, uh, here's the answer. Uh, in the wood elf chapter, like half of your mana was eaten up by the wood elf uh, settlement, right? So there was not too much mana left that uh, you could be asked for in the technologies. But uh, with the settlement of the wood elves being gone and a new chapter arriving, you still have all the mana production buildings and you produce certainly a lot of mana. And some players even were clever enough to use the free space of the teardown uh, wood elf settlement to build up even more mana producing culture buildings uh, until the sorcerers arrived. And you certainly have now more than enough mana to unlock the technologies in the sorcerers chapter. But of course, when the settlement of the sorcerers grows, also the sorcerer settlement will eat up some of your mana. So uh, be prepared to need more mana than before. But it's still fair and balanced. Uh, you just have to make sure that you also use the newest cultural buildings. No? Um, maybe the, the withering woods is the English name for the crying tree oh. maybe maybe yeah. you have to <laughs> maybe you have to build the the new mana production buildings as well uh, from the sources chapters to have enough mana around but then it should work fine um, Angela Koch um, says, can you please stop changing the fighting? There are enough different uh, puppets to fight with it's not funny how it changes continue well um, okay uh, I know we somehow made the impression that we were a lot of we put a lot of focus on the battle in the last months. Actually, about I think that we we we've the the most focus on the battle system was last year in summer, where for a few months less than half of our team was working on battle changes. Since then, our work on the battle has uh, has um, has been our workload has been removed considerably, and we um, we have focused on many other topics since then, like the Wood Elf and the Sorcerer's chapter, like the, the Halloween event and the Christmas event, the winter event and and the Valentine's event and so on. We made many other things and our focus was not the battle system. But it appeared like it because every release had some small addition to the battle system. Um, but I can assure you also this phase is now coming to an end. Uh, actually, it already came to an end in, in January. Yeah. So for for the future, don't expect too many in between battle changes. Now yeah. um, we added all the missing units. We added the missing upgrades. We worked on the UI and UX screens. Um, of course, maybe we will still improve something here and there. But be assured that our team is not working focused on the battle system all the time. That was actually only the case in, in summer. And we know that many players do not even use the battle at all. And that is also how we uh, schedule our um, workload. And we focus more on stuff that is interesting for everyone. And even more so in the future, you will see that. Weeping Willow. A Weeping kind Willow. player Thank reminded you. of the name. Yeah, um, yeah. There are a lot of questions um, about if it's possible to rotate buildings in the city. To trade buildings. To rotate. Uh, rotate buildings. This question is asked every, every single QA session. Yes. And the answer <laughs> is always no. <laughs> um, this is also part of the puzzling. Actually, it's also part of the technical implementation of the features. It's 
from a tactical standpoint, it's not even possible to rotate them. But also from a gameplay perspective, it could make the game way easier uh, than it is supposed to be. And we actually, the, the shapes of the buildings are not chosen, I mean, certainly they are not chosen randomly, but they are actually chosen with a purpose and with some consideration in mind. So if a building is four times seven, someone thought something about it. <laughs> and that is also... <laughs> someone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But oh, actually, I have to interrupt you because the time is slowly running out. So we have only one to two questions and then we have to end it. But just to finish this up. So it's not planned to give an option to rotate the building because it's, it's not possible. And for other reasons, it also does not make too much sense. I know it would be helpful sometimes, as would the storage be helpful, but uh, don't bet on it. It's, uh, it will not come. Um, sorry. Um, so uh, I'm sorry I lost your name, but there was a question uh, about if the granite production could be enhanced for the draft uh, chapter. And I think you could give some useful tips to actually speed it up without any balancing changes. <laughs> I mean, for every chapter, you have to solve the riddle, how many buildings do I need? To a lesser extent with the sorcerers, where you are forced to build a certain size of university, but in the chapters before, it's part of the challenge to find out how fast should I build and upgrade how many granite mines, for instance, in the Dwarven chapter. And um, I think if you're missing granite, you might have to build some more granite mines. Um, some of the quests are always uh, always also drop a hint what um, what settlement size would be recommended from our side. We usually have a quest that says build at least so and so many granite mines and so and so many copper um, foundries, for instance. We have this for every guest race, and this is actually always the like the minimum requirement. We we think the settlement should be even a bit bigger, but if you can't afford it, then you should still run fine with the requirement of that quest. So if you have just built as many buildings as the quest said, and you do not have enough granite, you should just place two or three more granite mines and you should be fine with it. Also think about that you might take a stop with the unlocking of technologies and focus on upgrading all the settlement buildings first because then you have a very uh, much increased production which will help you th speed through the remaining parts of the tech tree way faster. So if you would like granite, build more granite mines, build and upgrade them faster. That would be my tip. I would say uh, upgrade the portal. It's for nearly every guest race, this was a clue. Upgrade the portal first. Well, uh, at least for me, that I'm not an yeah, yeah. expert. In many chapters, <laughs> it's, I mean, the portal always increases the production of every other settlement building. So in many cases, uh, it's the best option to upgrade the portal first. But, you know, you have to find out for yourself. Everyone has its own size of the city. And if I don't see your account, I could cannot say what specifically is your problem. But in general, your settlement might just be a bit small. Um. Uh, there uh, was the question of um oh. some French people are asking for French translations. <laughs> that's that's as far as my game. French goes. I understand <laughs> that, but I salut. can't talk. Uh, yes, <laughs> salut, I'm sorry, uh, French. You know, oh. I had I had French for four or five years and. I can't speak it. It's Maybe um, the last one from uh, Oliver Anders. Uh, will yeah. there be a competitive part in Elvener soon, like a playground where you can fight against other players for some goods? We know that many players do not like the idea of having competitive gameplay. And it's a challenge to come up with a design where some players can participate in and others are not somehow forced to also participate. Yeah. That's a problem we have when we uh, think about these ideas. Uh, for instance, you could be in a guild where half of the members want to participate and then they might start to throw out other members that w do not want to participate. Mm -hmm. And we don't want to have this. We don't want um, to separate our players from mm -hmm. each other. So uh, and on the same, at the same time, we also do not want to focus too much on features that will only satisfy 
a, a small so, slice yeah. of, of the playership. We try to focus on, um, on elements that are cool for everyone. See, Elvenar, uh, the spirit of Elvenar is, is to work with each other and to support each other. And yeah. PvP or something like that, it's just not, it's not Elvenar. And I yeah. think most of all of our players Would feel, agree, no? yeah, feel that way. I mean, <clears throat> look at, uh, the question also came up, uh, why are we focusing so much on the battle system? Even though our impression is that we did not, yeah. we already made this impression that we focus a bit too much on something that is not uh, interesting for around half of our players. And so here you have a very good example of what happens if you focus too much into things that are not interesting for all of the players. Like a new chapter is interesting for everyone. And the fellowship and the tournaments should be interesting for everyone and events. So if we focus more on that, we make more players happy. And in that uh, spirit, it's unlikely that we will add a PvP element. Yeah. But unfortunately, we have to end this now. It was a lot of fun today. And As always. Yes. Ask tougher questions. <laughs> no, please don't. I just filtered them. Ah, so. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I wish you a very nice evening and hope to see you soon. And enjoy the Elvenar TV tomorrow. And yeah. Yeah, look the Elvenar TV show tomorrow, even though it's without her. Yeah. But be sure, she will be in the next episode Absolutely. again. Okay. Um, yeah. Yeah. Let's do the keep on playing. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> now it uh, it looks a bit like forced, you know, but we should still do it, should that, we? That yeah. was actually my intention, but yes, we should do it. <laughs> okay. So, thank you for watching us thank and you. keep, keep on, on playing. playing.